to use for a subject, and it's a three, I'm going to use three words, they all mean the same thing, but I know some of us are attracted to different words. Uh, so one of it is, Lord, help me to have a nevertheless praise. Help me to have a nevertheless praise. Or, Lord, help me to have a yet praise, a yet praise. And then the third is, Lord, help me to have a under all conditions praise. Amen. Lord, help me to have a nevertheless praise. Lord, help me to have a yet praise. A yet. This is what Habakkuk gave us here was a yet praise. A yet praise. And then finally, Lord, help me to have an under all conditions praise. Under all conditions praise. Now, that's hard to say. That's why I'm saying I didn't say I have it. I said, Lord, help me to have it. See, I didn't say I have an under all conditions praise. I'm saying, Lord, help me to have an under all conditions praise. I mean, it doesn't matter what's going on. I still can praise. Glory, Lord. No matter what I see, I still can praise. Uh, no matter what's going on in that particular moment, I still can praise right then. That's what we ought to get to a point where we got to aspire. Lord, help me to have a under every condition, under every situation, help me to have a yet praise. That means you describe it and then you say yet. You know what I'm saying? Uh, things aren't well, but yet. I got a headache yet. My belly's hurting, but yet. Right, right. My, my car's not working, but yet. Uh, things are falling apart in my house, but yet. Amen. My friendships are messed up, but yet. Amen. Girlfriend, boyfriend, husband, wife not acting right, but yet. <laughs> See, there's a yet praise. A yet praise that even after I tell the truth about my situation, I still can say yet. Oh, Lord, yet God is still good. Yet God is still my healer. Because even when I got a headache, yet God is my healer. All right, even when I got a, a belly, yet God is my healer. Uh, even when I feel bound, yet God is still my deliverer. Right, even when I'm in shackles, yet God is still my freedom. Because in the yet, you got to get to a point where that yet, and the yet has to be an intense yet, because you got to convince yourself in that yet that praise is on the way. Now, that tears are rolling down my eyes, but praise is on the way. Sadness is all over me, but praise is on the way. The yet catches that praise. The yet motivates that praise. And when you say yet, it changes the disposition. It changes the attitude. It changes the atmosphere. Yet, I got to praise. Yet, I got to hallelujah. Yet, I got to thank you, Jesus. Yet, Yeah! I said, not that you 
my head was down, but my head is up now. The last time you saw me, I was just, I was just scratching up a wall, but I got over the wall now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I can pray. Yeah. And now the last praise. Understanding David says in Psalms 42 and 5, he said, now, he said, why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted in me? But David was saying, now look, look, now look, you were just a little boy out in the outback. Y'all remember, David was out in the outback. You know what I'm saying? When God found him, he wasn't even among the main family members. You know what I'm saying? He didn't even have any rights among his brothers. He was just the low person on the totem pole. But God came and got David. And when Samuel came to get David, uh, Samuel didn't even consider David. Amen. Until the Lord said, now listen, you looking on the outside, Samuel, but I got somebody else here. And you got to keep asking Jesse where he is. He just, uh, the, the, somebody gave up on you, but the Lord said, you got to still go find that person. I, I know you don't think they should be saved, but I'm going to save them. Because the God wouldn't talk to somebody about you, but they started talking about you. But how about for a praise that lets God know I appreciate 
appreciate you. I'm looking for a prayer to let God know I still know you're somewhere with me. You promised you would never leave me. You promised you would never forsake me. I can't feel you right now, God. I'm praying, but I can't seem to touch the hem of your garment. The hem of your garment seems elusive. Your blessing seems elusive, but there's still down in me a deep praise. A yet praise. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 20 and 23, glory, glory. And they were talking about the house of Israel. And it was David again. See, David was a praiser. Right? When you are a praiser, you go through intense moments. I, I told y'all a long time ago huh, what the enemy loved to do huh, is he loved to attack you huh, where your strength is. Huh? That's what you got to understand. Huh? Some of us are praisers. Huh? Do you know what I'm saying? And the enemy wants to know you're a praiser. Huh? He's going to attack you at. He's going to make you feel emotionally insecure about your praise. He's going to make you feel like you don't deserve to praise God. You're not living up to the standard of praise. He's going to make you feel like you are not praising God because you don't have the language of praise. He's going to make you feel like you can't praise God because everybody else is doing better than you're doing. But you got to mind the devil in the name of Jesus Christ. And you gotta matter that your praise belongs to God. Your praise is unto God. Your worship is unto God. So it don't matter if I don't respect your praise. It don't matter if I don't receive your praise. God will receive your praise. God can receive your worship. He said, they that worship me must worship me in spirit. Faith looks through mess and see God's 
where he can say to my weight, Lord, you're doing all this to me. You took all this stuff to me. But I believe had you talked to the Lord, you don't realize it, but you're moving closer to your position. So we have yet praise. 
And yet, praise says, don't lie. See, unfortunately, we've taught a lot of people to lie about their situation. The Lord don't need us to lie. David never lied about his house. He said, right now, my house is not anything like God said it was going to be. He just said, oh, there, there's Micah and Beth Sheba. They best friends. Micah and Sheba were best friends. So I said, they their other best friends. They were never going to be best friends. So they both wanted their children to be king one day after they they're never going to be best friends. But they should have, well, we can't say what, what should have happened eventually. Because God knows best. Amen. But let's just say that God might have had a better way for what happened to have happened. But the thing is, what, and once it happened, right, David said, I created this situation. Right? And then they all have children, and then the children start fighting with each other. Then David has servants, and the servants start fighting with the children. Isn't that amazing? David's servant, who he loved, went and killed one of his sons, and then David killed the servant. Now David didn't, David loved the servant, thought the servant, the servant killed the son on behalf of David, then David got mad at the servant. You know what I'm saying? And he said, you dead, because you killed my son, even though David's son was trying to kill David. Now if you talk about a messy house, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They thought we don't have any sharp knives in my house. <laughs> Glory. They get mad at me, they have to come at me with a cake. Imaginations. 
bring down those strongholds. Yeah. Like you cast them what? If I should cast them up, cast them down. Yeah. Like you cast them down. So you can stay in your position. And stay where God has called you. It's a yet praise. Somebody today, you need a yet praise. Does that mean it's not you from your yet praise? So you can't go a somebody said, you can't go a day without praise. So I said, now worship, sometimes you have to move into worship. But you should never go a day without praise. You don't have to go a day, you don't have to go any time without praise. The Bible says, let everything that have breath praise ye the what? Lord. Now you when you get to where we don't have to go a day without worship, but we definitely don't want to go a day without praise. You got you gotta have a yet praise. And yet praise the Lord, I see all this. David said, my house is a mess. Yet. Thank you, Jesus. Yet I love you. Right? That little song you say, she's saying, I really love the Lord. Y'all remember that song? I really love the Lord. See, that's one of those ones that get you crying and get your breakthrough. So you got to have some breakthrough songs. That's part of praise. Singing is part of praise. Songs are part of praise. But you don't always have to sing them. Because I tell you, I'm singing myself because I can't sing. I just sing it in my mind with, with the best voice I can give. <laughs> uh, you give me a hot soprano, I'm on my top. <laughs> so, so you don't have to sing yourself. Just get you whatever you like. Some of y'all alto, some of y'all like tenor, some of y'all like soprano, whoever you like. Get them in your mind and start boogalooing. <laughs> get your praise on. Get your worship on. Get your breakthrough on. You know what I'm saying? And move back to your position. It's a yet praise. A yet praise. David said, my house is not so yet. Yet. My children are not acting right yet. Husband not acting right yet. Wife not acting right yet. Grandparents not acting right children yet. The parents not acting right ground, I say yet. <laughs> You gotta say yet, yeah, a yet yeah, praise, a nevertheless praise, a under all conditions praise. Yeah. Everyone's standing today. The veterans are coming. Everyone goes down. We're gonna pray and then we'll pray, especially if we're gonna pray for everybody, then we'll pray, especially for those who want prayer uh, today at the event this time. Lord, we thank you for reminding us. You have given us a yet yeah, praise. 